In Overwatch, there's nothing quite as beautiful as two support players that decide to help each other out. Honestly, support heroes are the ultimate wingmen, devoting themselves to allowing their teammates to do well and forsaking their selfish desire to collect eliminations in an attempt of being rewarded with an ego-boosting play of the game. That's why it is ever the more frustrating when said teammates make no effort to protect you from the likes of annoying flankers. I mean, that's how you get DPS mercies. Do you really want DPS mercies because that's how you get them? Needless to say that I had my fair share of teammates that thought being here was their Jeff given right when in reality they were entirely at the mercy, no pun intended, of my whims. Hey, all I'm saying is that if nobody wants to deal with that Farah, then I'll be taking matters in my own hands. And with an unlimited supply of Uno reverse cards, support heroes definitely lent themselves to annoying many a DPS player that thought they could just dive into your backline for a free kill. With that said, of all the support heroes in the game, there's definitely one that, more than any of the others, really needs your help. And that hero is Zenyatta. Hey, this is not me being biased, but it is a simple matter of fact that even if your Zenyatta can't land a shot, Discord Orb increases your damage output too, and Transcendence is the most powerful defensive ultimate in the game, saving you from otherwise team wiping situations. And I mean, did you see Karaku's video on hitboxes? My man's out there physically looking like a balloon while having been given no mobility or sustain. As such, you can be certain that there's no resource too valuable for me when it comes to saving my fellow Zenyatta players. In fact, there is one specific Zenyatta player I met that I decided was worth protecting. But where are my manners? On our last episode, after having fully exhausted the repertoire of the DPS category, we took up our arms for the final challenge and devoted ourselves to becoming a tank. The last enemy we had to face was our own overconfidence as an attempted spawn camp was turned around very swiftly, leaving us with many tough decisions to make. As much as that experience left me with a newfound appreciation for tank heroes and those playing them, at the end of the day, I feel most at home when playing supports. And it was then that I met who's probably the most upstanding positive Zenyatta main I ever had the pleasure of healing, introducing Zenpai the Zenyatta player. Now, there are a few things you have to know about that fellow to understand why I made the decision to devote my life to him as though he was my latest anime waifu. On my first day of returning to the support category, I was having a really bad time. It felt like the entire world was stacked against me, and in most of the matches I played, the vast majority of my teammates made no effort of actually playing the game. I met Zenpai on King's Row where we collectively shafted the enemy Doomfist while our team decided to speedrun getting back into the spawn room. Now, I don't usually do OQ okay with random people in quick play, but seeing as I was only gonna play a couple more matches anyway, and also seeing how he was actually a competent player, I decided to make an exception. But my bad luck in the game unfortunately continued. While I was using the Q time to scream into my pillow, Zenpai over here had a will that could not be broken. No matter how often we were faced with a defeat screen, he never lost his positive attitude and was more than happy to cheer me up. That's when I made the decision that this player above all else was worth protecting, leading us to a faithful match. Our story today brings us back to Nombani. Now despite me usually saying that hybrid maps are my favorite in Overwatch, Nombani is one of those exceptions that I very much dread mentioning. Of course I could tell you why that is, but it won't take long for you to understand once our team makes its way out of the spawn. Oddly enough, we didn't find ourselves under fire by the usual assortment of pocketed hitscan heroes sitting on the balcony, making me feel a wee bit uneasy. What are the enemies planning if they're not poking for early ultimate charge? In common smooth brain fashion, our team made its way onto the high ground just to be met with a full dive comp pushing our squishies back into the corridor. The enemies immediately put us in a very awkward position because we didn't actually have any DPS taking advantage of that high ground once we had claimed it. Our Widowmaker was instantly taken out on main thanks to the stealthiest Hammond player in Overwatch history and our Echo obviously was not feeling comfortable standing behind a shield. As such, the enemy team used their superior mobility to bounce on and off the high ground to whittle us down in a war of attrition that we were destined to lose. Now your common support player would feel completely completely content with running Ana into that dive comp, expecting their team to offer the space necessary to make that hero work. But that is a small brain way of thinking. I can't expect half the degenerates I meet in quick play to do something as complicated as creating space, and ultimately, my goal was to protect Zenpai. And how can I protect him if I can't protect myself? Unlike the skill fetishists on social media, I don't see myself above the option to play Moira if it means that I actually get to play the game rather than respawning on cooldown. Speaking of which, that's exactly what happened during the next encounter. We spent the following two fights playing mystery heroes in the DPS category to find out which of the heroes available lent themselves to obtaining the world record in turbo inting. While that display of degeneracy showed me that I couldn't rely on my DPS in this game, the saving grace was that it didn't take me long to fill up my ultimate charge. Our team was ready to march on forward in sheer disregard of our DPS's feeding, but when I saw the enemy Hammond approach our backline, I hastily shifted back to make sure I can protect Zenpai. But Maximilian was not stupid. He knew he couldn't land a finishing blow while I was still around, so he took his time waiting for an opportunity. And that opportunity arose in the choke 
choke point that made it impossible for us to dodge him, forcing Zenpai to use Transcendence. Considering that his ultimate would take care of all the healing our team could need, I used Coalescence to dish out as much damage as humanly possible. But having used Transcendence meant that we didn't have an ultimate to counter the Genji's Dragon Blade, making Zenpai a prime target for a counterattack. Little did the robot ninja know that, despite his overblown hitbox, our Zenyatta knew how to defend himself. And seeing as how he was doing a fine job on his own, I damaged Moira my way into the enemy spawn to make sure that any attempt of recontesting would be stopped dead in its tracks. It was that window of opportunity that allowed Maximilian to return and assassinate Zenpai in front of my very eyes. I had failed my duty as a bodyguard and knew that following this disappointment I had to adjust my playstyle. The car began moving out of its original parking spot and onward towards its destination, though it wouldn't take long until the enemy Doomfist decided to disrupt us. Of course his target was our Zenyatta, but Zenpai's godlike positioning allowed him to dodge the attack, leaving him with no shield and no chance to survive. But that wasn't the last we have seen of the enemy team as their die fully committed to trying to take out our support line. I on the other hand devoted myself to the protection of our Zenyatta, learning that Moira did indeed have a healing version of that damage orb I keep tossing out. Together with my Zara, we managed to keep the president alive allowing us to charge towards the objective and taking out anyone foolish enough to oppose us. But Maximilian returned with a vengeance, dropping his ultimate on the card and wiping the floor with anyone who got stuck in the choke point. That play made the enemies grow bold and while I could barely manage to get back into my spawn, the red team was so committed to taking out Zenpai that their Doomfist used his ultimate in the doorway. I don't know what that guy's problem is, but needless to say that he didn't succeed and he wouldn't live to explain his reasoning. But ultimates would be answered with more ultimates and after this bold display of diving skill, I would just let their Winston get away. Maximilian continued to be a nuisance, well knowing that our DPS were incapable of stopping him, but at last our team succeeded in getting back on the card. Unsurprisingly, the enemy Hammond returned with another ultimate, but of course, Zenpai had the answer. I mean, did he really think we would fall for the same trick twice? What does he take us for? DPS players? Speaking of which, Genji returned with another attempted assassination just to be met with a Graviton surge that had his name on it. I continued to keep Zenpai alive through Maximilian's diving attempts as we continued to push the card closer and closer to the second point. The enemy's cohesion had finally been broken as they tried to contest the card one by one just to be met with their inevitable demise. This means that we were finally on the home stretch. However, the biggest challenge was yet to come. The first engagement of the last point was held via an exchange of poking unpleasantries showing that none of the parties really wanted to commit to a brawl just yet. Tired of the constant poking and lack of commitment, I decided to initiate the fight by using Coalescence and made it my goal to put as much pressure on the enemy Ana as possible. Zenpai meanwhile successfully countered another minefield by using Transcendence, but you all know the law of old equivalent exchange, meaning that for every Q button pressed on our team, there must be another Q button pressed on the enemy team. Both of our tanks had fallen victim to that simple law of physics, leaving Zenpai and me in a bit of an awkward position. Of course I wouldn't dare to leave his side and supported him all throughout his flanking endeavors and our attempt to survive in enemy territory. But sometimes it isn't defense that makes for the best offense and instead it's it's just offense. I pressed the W key. Knowing Zenpai to be safe, I yeeted across the battlefield to show the enemy Moira once again who was bossed by recklessly following her every move. With my dominance established, I figured that taking out two supports would be better than one and despite the fact that her Doomfist tried to help, their Ana too would fall victim to my superior skill. Clearly frustrated about letting me get away, the enemy Doomfist used every available cooldown to take me out just to find himself in the midst of all of my teammates and no chance to get out of harm's way. Surely with that kind of a head start, you would assume that we just won the game then and there, but don't underestimate the power of high mobility in conjunction with a disgusting spawn advantage. There is a reason people call Numbani 2CP on wheels and ultimately we were sent back to our spawn to rethink our strategy. But whatever plan we had would not matter because the enemy team once again would prove to be very sneaky. I made a point in my last video that solo ulting can be a viable strategy and that's exactly what Maximilian did when he dropped down on our unsuspecting Zenpai to really drive home the fact that he wouldn't be able to reconnect with the rest of his team. It became apparent to us that the enemies hugely relied on what little high ground was left on the map, meaning that my Doomfist and I were on a mission. If we can manage to take away their last advantageous position, surely we'd put ourselves in a good spot to take this final fight. While my Doomfist made use of the healing orb to pressure the opposition, the last bit of damage we needed was provided via means of aerial support and we were ready to engage. My damage orb would force their Ana to forsake her positioning to avoid damage, resulting in her running into the arms of my Doomfist that already left her Moira in critical condition. Zenpai managed to fend off Maximilian all on his own and 
Meanwhile on the card, a Graviton search that was meant for the Sigma ended up catching Doomfist instead, and suddenly we found ourselves with victory in reach. We had successfully put the enemy team in a very tough position where they had to contest the card one by one again, and while that worked out reasonably well for them in regards to the 2 CP advantage they were given, to say that this fight ended in chaos would be an understatement. Everyone tossed the ultimate into the mix in hopes of that making the crucial difference, but it really felt like there was no end to this match in sight. Even after obtaining a double kill with my damage orb, there were still enemies left contesting the card and everyone scrambled to take out the culprit. When the dust settled and every ultimate was depleted, the victor would be crowned. That's right my friends, not only did we win the match at the end, but we did so with the president in pristine condition. Finally, at last I could return the favor and thank Zenpai for his kindness by providing at least one victory before ending my session. The end. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. If there's just one thing you take away from this, please let it be the fact that sometimes taking care of your supports can be the difference maker you need to come out ahead. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story, and if you did, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, consider subscribing if you want to see more, and definitely hit that bell icon to not miss out on the next episode. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and until next time, peace.